Hi, Mr. Pulley here today looking at the big picture, historically speaking. Now, for you digital natives out there, we're not talking about a thumbnail versus an open file issue, but the idea of pulling back from examining the details to see the whole image, the context, the setting, and hopefully the connections. Okay, maybe not that far. Uh, okay, anyway. First, we have three questions to keep in mind in regard to how we look at history. So our first big question is, who are we? What makes us the way we are? Our faith, our beliefs, how we pray, how we worship. Then there's how we think, reason, decide, and act. How we communicate, speaking, writing, text, email, tweet, blogs, rants. Hey, all of these things make up our culture. And it also includes things like music, art, movies, what we watch, read, listen to, and create. And all of this is influenced by our second big question. So our second big question is, where did we come from? Our ancestors, those who came and lived here before us, the countries we came from, their cultures, their customs. We need to think about how those things shape and influence our culture. What can we learn from the past to make better decisions and make smarter choices here in the present? And we need to make smart choices in the present because our present choices influence big question number three. Our third big question is, where are we going? What does the future hold? How can we prepare ourselves for it? And we need to keep in mind that the past and the present shape the decisions we make along the way to the future. And those decisions can change what the future will be. Did you follow that? A little difficult. Looking to and at the past, it's important to remember that history is just exactly that. A story, it's right there in the name. In fact, it's made up of a lot of stories. And like a lot of stories, these have more than one side and more than one way they can be told. These stories often change over time. They're full of facts and truths, but sometimes mistruth. I like to tell my students that history is like a jigsaw puzzle with a few differences. First, there's no box, which means no picture on the cover to show us how the puzzle should look when it's completed. Second, pieces are missing. The further back you go, the more pieces have been lost. We put together the pieces and the fragments that we have and we try to visualize what goes in the blank spaces, filling them out in our minds. Sometimes we discover new pieces and have to change the location of the pieces we already have and then the story changes. And speaking of changing the story, the third way history is different from a jigsaw puzzle, some of the pieces are fakes. The originals have been deliberately destroyed and counterfeit ones have been put in their place to intentionally change the story. And textbooks. Yeah, I know. They can be boring. They contain, after all, only the least controversial version of the story. We need to look beyond the textbook, but we also need to remember that it can provide us with the basic facts, general ideas, and the setting of the story. Then we need to be like detectives, sifting through the evidence, making connections, investigating the other sides of the story, the stories that make up history.